All right. Let's plot a line with a plunge of 30 and a trend of 50. Trend is just a direction, so I can find that on the primitive circle. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, so I went ahead and made a mark for the bearing of the line. Okay. I like to count uh, angles down from horizontal, like plunge or dip, using the equator of the stereonet. This allows me to be consistent in in how I plot things. You could equally uh, count in along here or along here. So it's important to count in along either the equator or the meridian uh, circles of the stereonet because those are the only two circles that actually touch the center. So I, those are the only two where I can actually count in 90 degrees and even reach 90 degree, a 90 degree plunge or dip on the stereonet. So for that reason, I'm going to move the marker, the bearing marker, to the east-west line. And remember that bearing, that bearing is the direction in which the line plunges. So from this point, then, I can just count in the plunge of the line. 10, 20, 30. And there is line A. I'll bring north back to north, and that is what line A looks like on a stereonet. So, whereas a plane, all right, we're looking at a lower hemisphere, and if a plane comes in and makes an arc where it intersects with our lower hemisphere, a line, on the other hand, comes in, passes through the center of our sphere, and punches through the edge of our hemisphere, or stirring it, at a single point, which is represented there. So we see that the stirring net reduces the dimensions of a problem by one. Planes are made lines, or arcs on a stirring net, and lines are made one-dimensional points. Let's plot another line. Line B, with attitude Oops, I'm getting backwards here. 75, 3, 3, 3. All right, so first thing is finding trend. So 270, 80, 90, 300, 310, 330, to the east-west line and count in plunge. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 5. Make sure I label it. Bring north back up to north. All right, and now I'm done. Let's go ahead and check ourselves for our lines. First, we want to make sure that the line is in the same quadrant that it that it trends. So A trends 0, 050, or in the northeast quadrant. And A is certainly in the northeast quadrant, so that's check for A. 333 three, three is in the northwest quadrant. Well, B certainly lands in the northwest quadrant, so there's a check. A dips shallowly at 30 degrees, and it's certainly closer to the primitive circle than it is to the center. So that's check for A. And B it plunges steeply at 75 degrees, and we can see that it plots fairly closely to the center of the stereo net. By checking your stereo plot, you're also practicing reading a stereo plot, and you'll get faster and more accurate with your readings as you do so.